welcome to chapter three. Um, so we're going to start off with some definitions and then we'll jump into some examples. So we're going to look at um, polynomial and rational functions. Um, for the first couple videos, it'll be polynomial functions only. So we'll see rational later. Um, so let's start with polynomial functions. So we've actually seen a couple polynomials. Um, when we were graphing lines and quadratics, um, these were types of polynomials. So a polynomial is anytime x is raised to a non-negative integer power. So non-negative means positive or zero. And an integer is like a whole number. So it'll be powers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, so, and this is what a polynomial looks like. So a polynomial will have this form. It can have up to n powers, right? It can have lots of powers. And they all have different coefficients. So a, a sub n is a coefficient. A sub n minus 1 is a coefficient. Um, and we have x to the n, we have x to the n minus 1, and we can go all the way down to a constant function called a0. So some examples might be like y equals 5x squared plus 1, right? A quadratic is an example. We can have higher powers, so maybe y equals x cubed plus 3x squared, and then plus 5, right? We can also have an x term x to the 6 plus x, right? It doesn't have to have every single one of these. Um, and then things that are not polynomials would be like negative powers. So let's do negative 1, actually, plus x squared. x to the negative 1 plus x squared would be not a polynomial because of the negative power, right? It has to be non-negative. Um, it also has to be an integer, so y equals x cubed is fine. But if I add an x to the 1 half power, it's no longer a polynomial because that's not an integer. So these are not polynomials. Um, the domain of any of polynomials, we did talk about this in the domain section a little bit, is all real numbers, so negative infinity to infinity. And that's just because we are allowed to plug in any number. Any real number for x. Right. There are no values that make the denominator zero because x is never in the denominator. There's no square roots. There's no weir weird issues. So there's no restrictions for x, which means anything is allowed. Um, degree, we probably heard this in an algebra class, but if not, here we go. Um, polynomial functions, we classify them by their degree. So it's the highest power of the polynomial. And then we also have a leading coefficient, which is a n, the one with the n power. And then a zero is called the constant term. So I'm just gonna jump into an example because I think that makes more sense. So in this example, we would have degree seven, because that's my highest power. Um, we have six x to the seventh, meaning six is my leading coefficient. And then we have minus 3x to the 4th, which is just kind of like a term, but x to the 7th has more power because it has like a higher power. Plus 9x, again, is just another term. And then minus 5. Since 5 doesn't have an x value, that is our constant term. So just some vocab we'll use throughout the chapter. And it'll be negative 5 because of the subtraction. So we're, we don't have to like memorize definitions, but we want to be familiar with the words so we can talk about them. Um, so let's look at some examples that we've already covered. Um, f of x equals a0. This would be like y equals 5 or y equals negative 2, right? Horizontal lines. They have degree 0, and they're called a constant function. Right? They make horizontal lines. Uh, linear would be, in terms, in polynomial notation, using the a's would be a1x plus a0, but that would be the same as having, like, uh, 3x plus 1 or anything, right? mx plus b. So that has degree 1 because x has a power of 1, and that's called a linear function. We've already seen these. And we've also seen quadratics, right? a2x squared. 
right? Because of the x squared, that makes it have degree two and it's called a quadratic. And it keeps going, so we're gonna add new powers now. So n equals three is called a cubic function. n equals four is quartic, kind of a weird word. And then n equals five, we might have never heard this one, quintic. Um, but really, after a while, we just start calling them polynomial with degree n. Otherwise, there's way too many terms. So you can just say a polynomial with degree five or of degree five. So let's look at um, graphs and then we will do more examples. Um, so graphing, um, we're gonna start off with the special case where we only have a single term. Those were called power functions. Um, and so we're gonna look at those single terms only. It's called a monomial for a single rather than like binomial had two terms. So monomial has one term. It's a single term polynomial. So these are gonna be like our base graphs and then we can kind of graph other polynomials from there. Um, so we wanna be familiar with these shapes. So f of x equals x is linear, it makes a line. Um, I'm gonna to go to down just to go in order. Um, x squared is a parabola. And we've seen the x cubed shape before also. Right, it makes the x cubed shape. And then let's look what happens with higher powers. So you'll notice x to the fifth looks similar to x to the third. It's just a little flatter. It's flatter for longer. And you'll see that for x to the fourth and x to the sixth as well, right? They're similar to x squared, but you'll see x to the fourth is flatter for a little longer. X to the sixth is flatter for even longer. So let's guess seven, eight, and nine based on these graphs. So n equals seven, n equals eight. I'm making room just for four graphs. n equals nine and n equals 10. So to me, it kind of looks like there's an even pattern and an odd pattern. Um, I will formally define this, but I, that's what I'm noticing. So I'm guessing that n equals seven is gonna look like these ones up here, but maybe a little bit flatter for a little longer than the previous ones. So that, that's my guess for n equals seven. And then my guess for n equals nine is it's flat for even longer, right? I'm thinking it follows that odd pattern. And I'm thinking something similar for those evens, right? It looks, I think it's gonna follow this pattern, but they're gonna be flatter for longer. So n equals eight maybe looks like that. And n equals 10, right? Just pretend it's nice and flat. Looks like that. And we can use Desmos to check. It's kind of nice to like compare them all at the same time. So let's do a couple, let's do all the odds at the same time. X cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, and x to the ninth. And you'll notice, right, as I zoom in, they're really all the same shape, right? It's just getting flatter for longer. And we can guess, right, x to the 11th is gonna be flat for even longer. So yeah, it's a little bit longer on the flat part than x to the 9th. So overall, when I zoom out, the shape looks the same. Right? From a distance, it looks the same, but as I zoom in, I can see that the flatness changes a little. So let's check out those evens. This isn't a proof, but maybe this will convince you a little. So x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, right? And you'll notice from a distance again, they kind of all look like parabolas, but it's getting more and more flat. x to the eighth, a little bit flatter. And so then x to the tenth, I'm guessing, is a little bit wider than that x to the eighth. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. Yep, and so it just keeps going. It's flatter for a little longer, but as I zoom out, they all look like parabolas. So you really wanna be familiar with these base graphs because that's gonna help us graph more complicated polynomials in a little bit. So we'll add more details in the next video and then we'll start graphing 
polynomials with more than one term. So this is only true for one term right now. One term means no plus or minus sign. Okay, see you in the next video.